Hello, Swadika. Welcome back to Thai League Central Podcast. Yes, you're with me. I'm your host, Ta Lao. Today, I'm joined by my good friend. He's a very popular figure among English media that covers Thai football. He is Gian, of course. Gian, lots to talk about today in our pod. We've changed the the way we're going to do our podcasts here at Thai League Central. Instead of doing a recap and a preview and the three big games and all this and all that, we're going to shorten things. You know, we're going to make it simpler for you guys to be able to listen to our podcasts and at the same time get as much information in a succinct and in a uh, more, I guess, shorter way so that you guys can go out and enjoy your lives and not just, you know, listen and hear us rant <laughs> on about Thai football. Anyways, before we get to the discussion of so many things that happened over match day nine, Gian, how are you doing? I need a break. I need to lie down and like, I need the Thai league to just calm down for like 24 hours. Just take a day off. All of you, take a day off. No news for 24 hours. I, I pray. <laughs> Man, major thanks though to all the news. I mean, we've, we're, we've been getting lots of publicity lately. So thank you to all the new fans. Thank you to all the Thai fans who are watching. So like I said, you know, thank you to Thai fans, foreign fans, everybody who... Just follow Thai League Central recently. This is, of course, our podcast here that we're doing. But, Gian, like you said, it's time to get back up again because we're going to discuss the things that happened across Match Day 9. Not so much was the the games that interesting. I know, okay, Buiram lost at home to Korat in a very shocking result at the Isan Derby. And... I guess the same thing happened for uh, True Bangkok United when they were struggling and they've lost now four in a row as they dropped points at home. It was a 5-4 defeat to Sukhothai, who are absolutely on fire. And Port went out to crush Royong. You know, that was the, the big scoreline, 7-2 away. But again, let's let's begin with the off-field stuff. So Saturday night, Mung Tong lose at home to Trat. Gama mm. steps out, resigning already well i mean it was already coming right he was not going to extend his contract beyond november and i remember when we called him when i called we spoke to him back uh i think it was around may or june during the lockdown and he said look i like this club uh, i believe in these kids and these kids need me and i'm like i, I agree with that statement and i thought he you know he was the right coach from Mung Tong. he's got a great record with young players uh but unfortunately if there's going to be this contract problem where you don't know what the future is, you can't plan long term, right? So given that the problem is already there, I think it, it makes sense from both parties that, okay, if we can't agree a contract, it's time for Mulkan to look for something new. I think he is a fantastic coach. He'll do well wherever he goes. Uh, and Mulkan will miss him definitely in the short run. They're going to miss him a lot. But now it's to see how they can get over it, how they can plan for the future. And hopefully the next time they have a coach, don't let it, don't let the coach run down his contract, you know, plan ahead, think about yeah. the future and don't get yourself in this position ever again. Yeah. And going on that, of course, before we talk about Mario Urofsky, who will take over as the next head coach for SEG Mung Tong, Alexander Gama is basically one of the most decorated managers in Thai league. He's won every competition there is to win with Buiram, of course, and he carried on and was the king of cup competitions at Chiang Rai. Now, and Mung Tong, just a little over a year during his, his stay here, I mean, the, the best thing he did was making Mung Tong go from last place to fifth place in a very chaotic 2019 season for them. But it seemed like everything wasn't going their way this year, you know, with all the players leaving, with the, the youth being brought up so quickly. It, it seemed like this wasn't really his team and he was just had to deal with the cards he was dealt with. So um, before going to Mario, do you think it was the right call that Gama resign and they're moving on to someone new or do you think Mung Tong should have done whatever they could for him to stay longer? Mm, that's a very tough question and I think that you do whatever you can within reason right so 
if for whatever reason they can't afford him or he doesn't agree to a long contract or whatever the reason might be. I don't know what the reason is, right? Uh, sometimes it's not possible. But yes, of course, the club should have tried to keep Gamma and I believe that they that they did try. Um, but this is what's happened and the club kind of needs to look forward now. Mm-hmm. And he's he's obviously going to go and do well or he's going next to talk about that in, in the yeah, in the coming moments of this pod and if if Mung Tong wanted results yeah then you should have done everything to keep him but yeah. you get the feeling that Mung Tong are not going to worry about results this season they're going to mm. worry about the kids mm. so if you if you judge it by that there's a way for Mung Tong to emerge from this relatively okay yeah that, that that's, that's the most diplomatic answer i can give definitely <laughs> And yeah, before moving on to what happened on Sunday night, Mario Urofsky, you, you like that call? Him and Daniel Seca and our uh, your good, your good, uh, I guess, uh, colleague uh, Darren Reed. Yeah, Darren. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I I I've been open about this. My first choice is towards the one coach Ban coming back. That's my first choice, without a doubt. Um, and I think Dennis Amato was available as well. That'd be a great choice. But you know, I think I'm I'm happy to put my faith in Mario. You know, he's he's spoken extensively that he wanted to be a coach in the Thai league. He's been endorsed by uh, Darren, who speaks very highly of him. Um, if reported to be, be believed, even Slavisa Jokanovic speaks highly of him. Yeah, uh, and he's clearly committed to this project. So I'm willing to give it a shot. Let's see. Let's give him time and see how it goes. All right, we'll move on to Sunday night now. And Mano Poking is the next man out of the true Bangkok United job. Yes, he um, said he'll need a a little bit of a break and time to reflect before he comes back again to manage another team. But it's very sad to see him leave. What, six years and a half, over 200 games with true Bangkok United. And he's somebody who... Whether you're a player, a staff, you know, media as well, he's very nice to everyone. And I guess just what happens on the pitch wasn't good enough this season for uh, uh, Bangkok United, and he uh, he resigned. You know, he, he said that uh, he'll take responsibility and then he'll leave. So, I mean, it is what it is. We wish him all the best. But Gian, what do you make of this situation with him leaving True Bangkok United? I mean. Ever since I started watching Thai football, he's been the coach of Bangkok United. You know, since I began watching Thai football, six years is an incredibly long amount of time in Southeast Asian football and anywhere, to be honest. Yeah. By any standard, six years is a, is a fantastic record. And I sort of, you know, wish that it didn't happen in between all these other resignations too because it doesn't. we don't have enough time to fully, you know, talk about it. But look, the BU players look distraught by it. He's clearly a very well-liked figure at the club. Um, he's he's always been super nice to, to the media and the press. I remember when I first interviewed him, I thought I'd get 10 minutes. He gave me two hours and a meal and just mm-hmm. talked openly about football, which was, you know, he's he's a really nice guy and he definitely will get, you know, another job in the Thai league and do very well. Yeah. But, I mean, he himself, he said it, right? I think the words he used were, I cannot reach the players anymore. And when I heard that, I, I was, you know, that's really sad. <laughs> it's It reminds me of Pochettino quite a, uh, quite a lot, you know, because they – play great football, they get really close, and they, they never get over the hurdle. And the longer they don't win a championship or a, you know a title or a cup, the longer they don't win, the more and more the pressure weighs on them. And I think that it's he's been unlucky, of course, during the time during his time. Uh, he'll tell you that he, he he's made mistakes and he'd wish he could do things differently. Uh, and it's a tough breakup, but it, it is what it is. Yeah, it it is what it is. I mean, yeah. I football three managers gone in the span of just three days. And we'll now move on to Monday. We were actually the first <laughs> force in Thailand. Oh my God, Monday. We were the first wow. force in Thailand to break this story. Bozidar Banovic is out. Yes, he... Um, you know, resigned from the Boy Ram United job after the defeat at home against Nakhon Rajasima in the Isan Derby. And yeah, the Boy Ram will be looking for a new manager, but we already have news that it will be Kama. But mm-hmm. yeah, Banovic gone. You also talked to him over the COVID break. 
Guillen is another yeah. one of those managers you've talked to and, you know, you've interviewed with and then got to know a bit of his philosophy and all his um, way of playing football. What do, you, what do you think of him leaving Bui Ram United? I mean, it's his second time leaving now, I guess. Maybe he'll return sometime in the future? Mm, look, I mean, it's, it's a resignation, you know, on, on paper. But I think, you know, behind the scenes, he's been feeling the pressure uh, because of the slow start. And we can't, we can't deny that. Um, uh, obviously, Bandovic has been very committed to Bui Ram. Over this time, he rejected an offer. I don't know if many people know this, but he rejected an offer to manage the national team of Montenegro, his home country, to stay with Buriram because he's really committed to the project. So he's obviously faced pressure this season. The conditions have changed. And I think it's a bad, it's, it's bad for Buriram that he's gone. That's my, that's my take here. Because, so, uh, you know, I was once talking to Darren, as you mentioned earlier, the youth academy uh, director at Mung Tong. And I, I asked him, look, Mung Tong probably have a higher quantity of young players, but how come Buri Ram are producing such good quality players? And he said, it's because they've had the same manager for a long time. It's because the players know what Bandovic expects. And because Bandovic is willing to stay for a long time, he's willing to play the young players. Yes, sure. Gamma is also willing to play the young players, but... Is it going to be the same long-term vision? I mean, mm-hmm. if if he stays for as long as Bandovic stayed, that's brilliant uh, for Buriram. But of course, with Bandovic, I thought the club was turning a corner. Like he had a trophy last season and was still in the job. I thought that was really encouraging. They really believe in him, and I think he's the right man for them to believe in because he's he's proven that he's good at this, and he's he's committed to the club. So I think him him gone might improve the results in the short run. Of course, Gamma is excellent. If you want one man to rescue you in the situation, you want Gamma for sure. Gamma is the, you yeah. saw what he did last year at Wang Tong. He will rescue them 100%. Uh, I'd, I'd even put money in them coming top four first leg if he's there. He, he can turn things on really quick. But I think they had something good going with Bandovic. And Gamma needs to commit long term if they want to, you know, recover what they've lost, shall we say. Yeah, for sure. And again, three foreign managers gone within the space of three days. And it, for me, it just, everything seems to happen too quickly. I mean, you know, the, it's almost like because one happened, the other happened, which saw the, the, Mm. you know, the, the latter happen. It's almost like they're all three clubs were sort of waiting for this moment to, I have a feeling because one went, the other went, the other went. So yeah, it was it's, it's, sort of a domino effect that happened this, this weekend. It was, it was absolutely shocking to take. I think it also happened because you've got, you know, high, high stakes league. Like you've got to come top four in the first leg, really yeah. high stakes. And you've got a closed country. So you can't hire a manager from abroad. Mm-hmm. So it's all happening internally. And that's why this all happened at one go. Yeah, I mean the next the next manager for True Bangkok United is probably in Thailand right now. We we just don't know who it is. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, and I mean really yeah, perfect. right now they've they've gone with uh, Danny Invincibile, correct, as the uh, the the temporary caretaker who who's gonna run things there. But all the best to him there as well. So. SCG Mung Tong, True Bangkok, as well as Buiram, they'll be playing with new managers on Match Day 10. And talking about Match Day 10, we have two games to preview for you. Gian, which one do you want to go in depth first? Well, I think I've got to pick BG against Sukhothai because, you know, Sukhothai, let's be honest, they smashed Mark United at the weekend. Yes, they did. Score five goals. They were incredible going forward. You know, everything Baggio and Ibsen did, you know, turned into a goal. And they've come to the top four now. They're sitting in fourth place. So it's a really tough away trip for BG. They dropped two points last weekend to 10 men to Wutpokan. So they're going to need the points if they want to keep their place. And Sukhothai now, I think, after that result, can genuinely think if we do things right, we could even sneak into the Champions League, mm. which they've done before, which they've done before snuck in through lucky draw but this time they'd have deserved it if they sneak in and um i think that they're gonna be really keen to get three points so bg have to watch out for them 
Yeah, and, and with Suho Tai, something I like to mention about their starting in Levy against True Bank of Gianai, the this was something that I was you know I, I, I saw it and I thought I had to discuss about it. Did you know that all of their players except for Pierre Pong in goal are twenty seven years or older? So mm. talk about experience. You know, you have the foreigners, you have Ibsen Mello. Um, and, and John Baggio, who were the star of the show, they did one twos at all the flicks and tricks to to score those combination plays. But behind them, you know, Pia Rad, you have Nukun Kit, you have Sasanapong, you have um, the likes of uh, the experienced Nathu Wichala and Bud, as well as Dej Hasad. So these guys are people who played at teams all over Thai league before and they're here now combined using that experience from you know maybe being the, a sub at a big team or being a, a main player at you know uh, maybe a great b team and they're using that and the person who's making it work is surpong i mean a man like the the manager is an absolute genius in how he's picking these 27 28 29 year old players and combining them with foreign talents to make it work. Like some of the goals they scored, I think it was the fourth and the fifth goal they scored against True Bank of United. The, the passing was at some point, I was, I'm was seeing Barcelona, right? It was, you know, one, two combination play, give and go, quick. And, and True Bank of United defenders were just, you know, it was Everton and, and Tom Beer were just looking at each other like, what is going on? I mean, they couldn't catch, they couldn't catch these seven, 27 year old players. And, it's insane how how Suropong has done all this with uh, Suho Thai side is undefeated since the COVID return again. Yeah, and uh, you, Suropong is brilliant. I mean, I'm surprised he has an old team because he had a very young team at Patia United and some of Pragan, but damn, he's really good at, you know, getting the team to play with confidence on the ball. And turning uh, Jung from like a center back to an attacking midfielder was one of the weirdest and best decisions I think mm-hmm. uh, tactical moves I've seen in the Thai league I think it was Phil who said it um, the Boi Ram job is crying out for Sura Pong Kong Tae he's with on Twitter <laughs> yeah I agree with that That's, he'd be great with it. he's that good but yeah I mean if he can get Champions League with Suko Thai I'd be one of the biggest you know, yeah, the biggest Thai league Su- Suko Thai and BG football. game is obviously that one will be on uh, Sunday night yes that, that game is Sunday night at 6pm now again so we've Already previewed this one. Sugotai hosting BG Batum. Which way is it going to go? God, I I can see this being a draw as well. I, okay. I can see Sugotai holding out. Like, I, I can't decide which one will take the initiative to attack because BG will be really scared of that forward line. Mm-hmm. So I think they'll end up being too conservative and it'll end up in like a maybe even a nil-nil I won't be surprised I think BG's defense will take care of Sukhothai's attack I think their defense is more disciplined than, than Bangkok United's defense so I think oh, yeah, sure. and Cardozo but- will, will take care of the the Melo and Myung Juno and uh, Baggio combination play so I, I don't think BG will lose Hmm. I think BG will win this one. You know what? I, I'm going to go with BG. I'm going to say a 2-1. There will be goals for sure. I think they'll sneak away with a 2-1 away win. I don't see them scoring two goals in open play because they haven't in a they, long They time. don't need to be in open play. That's my point. Yeah. If you're going to rely on set pieces, you know, it, I don't Cardozo know. Cardozo I mean, and Tunia's headers. There we go. 2-1 yeah, yeah, win. Yeah. Yeah, fine. Maybe. Or Maybe. penalties. You never know. Or just, yeah, who knows. BG penalty United. Gian, let's move on to another big game of match day 10. This one is Sunday at 7 p.m., so just an hour later. Police Tarot taking on SCG Mung Tong. Now, Police Tarot got a very impressive 2-2 away draw at Bajuap last week. And that was courtesy of two goals from Babo Mark Landry, who's their new signing. Maybe we'll see Mohamedou Sumare playing in this game against SCG Mung Tong. While for the visitors, it's a chance to see Mario Urohasi's first game. Now he's got around three to four days of full training with the, with the team. So 
um, basically a week. You know, it, it started on, on Monday. Um, they'll probably train every day this week, maybe get a rest on um, on uh, one day before match day and then get things going on Sunday evening. But uh, for, for me, if, if I have to preview this game, I think Police Taro will be the favorites to win it. Not because Mung Tong changed, you know, their manager, but I think Police Taro this year, they don't fear anyone, this, the, their style of play. Rang San's midfield, you know, with Gano Porn as well as more experienced, experienced players around him, you have um, the likes of uh, Athit Bujinda up front, and then you know, Narong is also in there. So it's it's a it's a side that I feel like they play with so much charisma and they play with so much freedom. And if um, the former Muang Tong player, um, who who basically got the national team call up, but Hong Pon shows up big in this game, maybe he'll be there for the the November camp again for the the Changsu camp that's coming up next month. So. It's a lot to prove for a, a, a polystyrene side that doesn't have anything to lose at all. And Rangsan loves these type of games. You know, they beat Buiram earlier on in in the opening day, and they do have the pace to to beat sides. Uh, you know, on the run of play. So I have a feeling if, if Mario gets to attacking like like he was as a player, if he gets to attacking in his way of coaching. Maybe they'll get exploited by Police Hero. And what do you think of my my analysis for this? Do you think that Police Hero have the upper hand? Yeah, I think I think um, Rangsan's built a fantastic team because when they play against teams that are not to their level, they they keep the ball and they dominated the ball away against Prachua. They dominated away against Sukhothai, had most possession. But also when they need to defend and sit back, they'll do that and do do that well as well. You know, at court at Buriram, when they played at home against Buriram, they did that very well as well. And for me, I'm really interested to see how Mano, uh, how Mario lines up, oh, my, my, my brain, how Mario lines up with Mung Tong, because there are so many young Mung Tong players that Gamma did not play because they don't fit his, his Gamma ball style, if you will. Guys like Sandy, I really want to think, I, I, I think Mario is going to put him in the team possibly. Players like that, who who can provide that little extra, uh, and Gamma didn't didn't play. People like Kumin, Picha didn't really get a chance as well. So it'll be interesting to see how does Gamma fit. In, how does Mario fit all these players together? <laughs> oh my God, I need, I need Mano, I, Mano and Gamma, <laughs> Mano and Gamma on on coach I'm, more. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry to break your heart. <laughs> okay, I see how how Mario. Cause saying Mario to be a coach is like it's new, right? It, that's yeah, why I'm getting so confused. Yeah, how Mario is going to line up because he, he could line up. I have no idea what his coaching philosophy is. It'll be really interesting. <laughs> and on, on Taro, I've got a question for you, Ta. Yeah. Who do you drop in that forward line to make way for Samari? You've got Atit Bujinda, <laughs> Greg Hula, Mark Landry, and Patompon. Who do you drop to make way for? I, I think Patompon, Patompon won't be in the front three. I think he'll be playing in midfield next to Kanokpon and next to yeah, Nalo. So, so they're gonna go Kano Pon Nalong and yeah, so and Pon Pon in midfield. The front three, you're gonna play Babo on one side for sure because he's banging in goals week in week out. Uh, you're gonna play Sumare on the other side if if he features, and you gotta put Atit up top. Greg so you drop be, Greg Hula. Greg will be the super sub, Ooh. but but you know what? Realistically, what I think they'll do, they'll put Greg in and they'll put Sumare as a sub. I don't think Sumare is yeah. ready. If you're in yeah. quarantine, you know, chilling out maybe working out like an hour, two hours a day, but most of the time you're spending is, is in your hotel room, probably watching Netflix. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get that fitness level that yeah. every athlete's going to get. So I think Sumari will come on late in the second half. I'd love to see how good he is in person. That I'm, I'm going to be there for that game. So yeah. Again, before I let you go, we'll do score predictions for this game first. So Police Hero and SCG Muntong. I'll go with a draw. I'll go with a draw. Okay, so 1-1, 2-2, 0-0? 1-1, 1-1. One, one. One, one. One, one. I'm going to predict a win for Polis Terror. I think Sumare is going to score. I think it's going to be 1-0 for them. <laughs> Sumare's publicist at work. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all the time we got this week in Thai League Central Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us from Gin and I. Till next time, peace. <laughs>